Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of AVUSD Storytime Science. I'm Mrs. Gillette. Today's story is Magnetic Max, written by Monica Lozano Hughes, illustrated by Holly Weinstein. It's read today by Dakota Tate, AVCI Explainer, Class of 2021. Do you like to play with magnets? Have you ever wondered why they only stick to certain objects in your house? Do you know what's magnetic and non-magnetic? Well, Max does. He loves experimenting with magnets and knows exactly how they work. But when he shares his excitement with his friend, Nick, Nick is baffled. He thinks it's magic. As you're listening to the story, I want you to keep track of all the objects that Max and Nick use to test their magnets. Be sure to stay tuned after the story because I will introduce you to an exploration for you and your family to do to test objects in and around your house. See you soon. My name is Dakota Tate from Apple Valley High School, class of 2021. And today I'll be reading you Magnet Max by Monica Lozano Hughes. Illustrations by Holly Weinstein. There once was a boy named Magnet Max who wanted to test what magnets attract. He loved to explore with objects galore to see what kind of things would react. One sunny day, Magnet Max went to play at Nick's house. Nick did not know this great find. Max showed him the habit of his wonderful magnet. Watching it work blew Nick's mind. Wow, Nick yelled, that's swell. The magnet's powers gave him a thrill. Magnet Max made no reply. With a wink of his eye, he made his magnet attract at his will. Nick leaped up with glee at the magic you see and asked, how do you get them to stick? Magnets give off a magnetic field, Max replied. They'll stick to anything like iron or steel real quick. If you please, even nickel and cobalt can be attracted with ease. There are so many possibilities. These are metals that can be part of many things, such as rings and being magnetic is key. So on that day, the boys decided to play by searching for things they could find. They looked for metal objects all about, in and out, and found many items that would bind. A paper clip, the refrigerator, a nail, and a bolt, with a jolt, attached to the magnetic, with a force. Nick exclaimed, Goodness sakes, I'm amazed at the magic it makes. Can we stick it to a horse? But a shoe, a ball, a plant, and a doll could not stick to the magnet, of course. These items are not magnetic or kinetic, said Max. They don't have the special force. The day had gone by as they searched far and wide in the house for more object to test. They heard Nick's mom call from all the way down the hall. Max, your mom said it's time to go rest. Max and Nick said, Aw, man, we've just begun. We aren't done. We were just about to test out a comb. They both looked at the magnet, wanting more to explore. It was time for Max to go home. Then Max said, How about we hang out tomorrow and we continue our play? As Max walked home, he thought of things they suggested and tested, and how fun it was to explore today. Max wanted to share his tool. That's so cool, so other kids could feel the same joy. He lay down in bed to relax, and closing his eyes, he dreamed of how wise he would be as explorer Magnet Max. Now that you've learned a bit about magnets, I have a question for you. What objects are magnetic and which are non-magnetic? I want you to think of a way to test this question. What kind of experiment can you put together to learn more about magnets? Here's a simple exploration I put together. First, I want you to collect different objects from around your house. Be sure to include different materials, paper, plastic, metal, cloth, rock, wood, anything that you can find. Next, I want you to make a data sheet where you can record your results. Here's one that I put together. Just piece of paper. I separated it into two sides, one for magnetic and one for non-magnetic. Next, use a magnet to test all of your objects to see which side they need to go on. So you can use any type of magnet. I have a lot of different examples that I got, a couple from my classroom, a couple from Lowe's, but then I just grabbed a couple off of my refrigerator and I decided I'm going to use Goofy. So before I test, I want to make some predictions. I'm going to sort my objects into two piles, one that I think will stick to the magnet and one that I think will not stick to the magnet. So I'm going to do that really quick for you. 
and have these out of the way. So let's see, I think the car will be, have my wood, battery, screw. Okay, now it's time to test. I'm going to pick up each object and put my magnet close to see if it sticks. If it sticks, I put it on the magnetic side. If it does not, I put it on the not magnetic side. So I'm going to go through and do that for each of the objects really quick. So, car, no, that's not. Pick up, screw. and the battery. Oh, that did make sense. Okay, now that I have finished my exploration, I need to count up my results. So I'm going to count all of the objects on my magnetic side and all of my objects on my non-magnetic side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six that were magnetic and one, two, three, four that were non-magnetic. So now that I have my numbers, I need to graph this. So here's an example. I made a graph that on one side has the number of objects and on the other side, it has magnetic and non-magnetic. So here I have my six objects that were magnetic and my four that were not. Use this with your parents or your brother and sister, make some math problems. How many more magnetic objects were there than non-magnetic? Which has more? Which has less? How many more? How many less? How many all together? A lot of different math problems that you can make up using your information from your graph. If you enjoyed this, don't stop here. Sort your objects by what they're made out of. Made a pile of plastic objects, metal objects, wooden, natural, and see how many you have in each pile. Another thing is when I did this activity in my classroom, my students loved to go around the classroom and test larger objects. So test the refrigerator, test your doors, test the corners in your house. Do the magnets stick to any of those? Test your mirrors, test the shower. Okay, can you find all the hidden metal around your house? Can you think of another way to record your data? Can you think of another way to graph your data? Keep checking back for more science and engineering activities. If you enjoyed this story about magnets, there will be another next week where you get to design an object that uses magnetic force. Stay curious.